It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? And now, here's our story. It's a crisp, clear morning on the Double R Bar Ranch. The bracing air tingles with action. And action is what Roy, Dale, and Pat are getting as they test some of the two-year-old quarter horse colts and fillies. Ha, ha, there. Go on, boy. Get in Catch there. that other fellow, Blackie. You can do it. Come on, Snook. Step on it, baby. Go, boy, there. Oh, we nose them out. Go there, Flash. Go, boy. Go, go there. Hey, these are three good colts. We were just heads apart at the finish line. But my horse was in front, wasn't he? Well, I thought I won. What do you mean? Well, little Snooks here was passing both of you just like you was anchored. Well, it was close, all right. If the youngsters are going to be this even, we'll have to get someone with a camera out here at the finish line. Let's cool them out and try a couple of the others. Hey, who's this? That horse trailer can certainly stand a coat of paint. Say, I've seen that fellow around. Hey, I saw you three racing those horses. Want to sell any of them cheap? I don't know I raise them to sell, but they aren't cheap. Heck no. These are the best doggone bred colts in Paradise Valley. In fact, the one Roy's riding was sired by Trigger. And if you live around here, you certainly know about him. I've heard of a horse named Trigger. I'm Jeff Kaufman. You fellas are Rogers and Brady, aren't you? Yes, we are, and this is Miss Evans. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Kaufman? Aren't you the gentleman who bought the Rocky Falls spread for a dude ranch? Yes, yes, that's me. Bought it for cash, practically ready to open up. I was just sort of riding around to see if I could pick up some cheap horses for the dudes to get thrown off of. Yeah, I guess getting tossed is part of the game for a tenderfoot, but you don't try to get them thrown, do you? What's it to me? If they break an arm or a leg, I'm insured. How much would you want for that colt you're riding, Rogers? This one? Oh, about $1,200. $1,200? I just bought the horse and the trailer there for $25. For $25? Well, what's wrong with him, Mr. Kaufman? Well, he's blind in one eye, but he looks good. This trailer here was quite a bargain, too. Only cost me five bucks. Sure, but if the thing would break down while you're carrying a good horse in it, it wouldn't be such a bargain. Insurance, Rogers, insurance. If anything happens, let the insurance company pay for it. You're new in the dude ranch business, aren't you, Mr. Kaufman? Yeah. First time I ever tried this racket. Well, if you don't mind a suggestion, I'd try to get the best horses and the slickest equipment I possibly could. Otherwise, you aren't going to get many customers. I could teach you a thing or two about business, girl. I'll sign up the rich dudes from the east, collect plenty from them in advance. If they don't like it when they get here, well, they can't go anyplace else. Somehow, I don't think you're going to be too successful. You know, that's no way to run a ranch. What do you mean, that's no way to run a ranch? My first guest is arriving tomorrow for three weeks. He's one of the richest men in the country. Big banker by the name of Phil Botfeld. Want to sell that colt for $50, Rogers? <laughs> I should say not. Well, would either of you fellas be interested in a job as sort of guides around the place? I suppose you'd pay about uh, $35 a week? 15 But mm -hmm. you get your meals thrown in. Well, you aren't going to be able to find any wranglers who will work for that kind of money. Well, if I can't, I'll just pick up a couple of bums and dress them as cowboys. Just a little color around the place. Well, Rogers, if we can't do any business, I'll be driving on. Good luck, Mr. Kaufman. The way you're operating, I think you're going to need it. Yeah, that was a 
was a fine lunch, Dale. Well, I guess Trigger and Bullet and I'd better be getting back to the ranch. Fine. I'll see you tonight, Roy. Oh, <laughs> that'll be 75 cents. Here you are. Hey, here comes that Kaufman guy. He's probably going to try to buy the blue plate special for eight cents. <laughs> <laughs> he was in two days ago. He said his millionaire had arrived and that everything was going great. He's an odd one, all right. He may have bought that spread for cash, but he's sure not spending much on equipment. Instead of the Rocky Falls Ranch, he ought to call it the Second Hand Ranch. <laughs> uh, or maybe the Cast Off Acres. Oh, Rogers, I saw your horse outside. I'm glad I found you. I want to ask a favor. Why, well, sure, Mr. Kaufman, but I'm still not selling any Colts for $50. No, no, I'm in serious trouble, Rogers. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the matter? I told you about this millionaire that's at my place. Well, he's missing. Missing? We'd better go down and tell the sheriff. His office is right down the street. Well, I was just there. There wasn't anyone around. Of course, I don't want anyone to get wind of this. It might be bad publicity for my place. Well, tell us what happened. We'll see what we can do. So Mr. Botfeld rode out yesterday for a look at the falls. The horse came back last night, but he didn't. What about the guide? Well, I haven't hired any guides yet. I figured they'd be a needless expense. Well, that country around the falls is a mighty wild place for a tenderfoot to go all alone. Don't tell me you sent him out on that blind horse. Yes, yes, I did. I only bought two others, and they didn't turn out to be very good saddle horses. Well, I don't like to say I told you so, but you really should equip that place properly. And I think you can afford it. Uh, maybe you're right. I certainly wouldn't want anything to happen to Mr. Botfell. Uh, what's the matter? Doesn't your insurance cover that? Certainly the insurance covers it. I'm just worried about bad publicity. Well, standing here isn't finding your millionaire. we better get to your place fast, Kaufman, and we'll see if we can pick up his trail. <laughs> Walking along this confounded ledge is a-killing my feet. Well, Nellie Bell couldn't get up here, and I can't say that I blame you for not riding that horse Kaufman offered you. Oh, I'm sorry. Easy now, Trigger. This is tricky going. Yeah, it sure is. One slip and you'd fall 50 feet into that pool. And then, if you were lucky, you could swim out before the current caught you and carried you over the falls. Except the banks are too steep to climb. Well, I hope that didn't happen to Mr. Botfeld. If it did, I might as well look for a new line of business. If I were you, Mr. Kaufman, I'd get off that one-eyed spoot and come along on foot like Pat's doing. I wouldn't trust that horse's footing on a lawn. No. And the way he keeps shying at shadows, why... Hey, help me! Help whoa, me. whoa, Trigger. Stick on him, Mr. Kaufman, so we can get to you. Uh, yeah, hey, I'm coming too, Roy. I'll try to grab his head. I can't stay on! I'm... I'm... Oh, oh. oh, golly, Roy, that critter threw him right off into the pool. Well, I just hope he didn't hit any rocks on the way down. Steady there, you fool horse. Kaufman, are you all right? Get me out of here, Rogers. I can't swim. He can still talk. I guess he ain't hurt. We'll have to get a rope down to him, Pat, fast. My lariat won't be long enough, I guess, but we'll have to use this stuff Kaufman brought along from his place. Yeah, he figured some rope might come in handy, but this is sure beat up rope. Well, it'll have to do. Here comes the line, Kaufman. Grab it. Loop it around your waist and hang on tight. Pat and I'll pull you. Grab hold here, Pat. Right, Roy. I got it. Kaufman, work your way up the bank with your feet while we pull. Uh, all right, Roger. Hey, he's heavy. Why don't we just tie this end to Trigger's saddle and let him pull? I want to keep the rope as clear of the rocks as we can. It's pretty frayed, and if it scrapes along here while Trigger's pulling, what? Uh, the rope is breaking. Oh. Serves him right. He probably bought this confounded rope in a junkyard. Well, never mind that now, Pat. Help! Help! I'm going downstream! The current's got him. He'll be carried over the falls in less than a minute. Back with Roy in a flash. First, let's talk to his pals, Hand and Andy and Candy, the honey bears you see on every Sugar Crisp package. We, we want, want a picture! Let me fight! Hey, 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 calm hey, down. Hey. What's all the excitement? We, we want to talk about... Oh, Sugar Crisp! Oh, no wonder you're excited. Everybody's excited about Sugar Crisp because it's wholesome puffed wheat with a delicious candy coating of sugar and honey. And there are three different tempting ways to eat it. It's the dandiest tasting cereal ever. Sweet as honey without sugar. That's because Sugar Crisp is already sweetened. Just add milk or cream. And it's especially handy for snacks. A grand treat, morning, noon, or night. Yes, Sugar Crisp is good whenever you're hungry. Nourishing, too. I eat it like candy, right out of the box. It's yummy. Absolutely. 
Sugar Crisp makes wonderful eating anytime, any way. And it gives you loads of good, quick food energy, too. So listen to the three Sugar Crisp bears. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Mother, when you shop this weekend, buy genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. <laughs> Jeff Kaufman opens a dude ranch on the Rocky Falls spread in Paradise Valley. His method of operation seems to be to spend as little money as possible and let the insurance companies do the worrying. But when millionaire Phil Botfeld disappears while riding alone near Rocky Falls, Kaufman is worried, and Roy and Pat go with him to look for the missing man. Above the falls, Kaufman's horse shies, and he's thrown into the rushing current. No use trying this rope again, Roy. Hey, what are you doing? Getting rid of my guns and boots. I'm going after him. Help! 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 Oh, but how will you get him out? One lariat isn't long enough, and mine's back in Nellie Bell. The lead slopes down from here to the falls. I'll try to hold Kaufman up until you and Trigger can get to a place where my lariat will reach. But, Roy, that'll only be a few yards above those falls. Here goes. Roy! Roy, be careful! Roger! I'm, go- I'm going down! I've got you, Kaufman. Just don't thrice around. Don't, don't swim downstream the falls. You can't get up the banks here. But the current will sweep us over. Well, relax and give me a chance to swim. Get in closer to the bank, Roy. I'm trying, Pat. Have to go down a little further, Roy. Bank's still too high. Rogers, you, you just get me out of this. If we get out of this, maybe you'll buy some decent equipment. Here comes the rope, Roy. Don't snap it. I've got it, Pat. Good work. Uh, are we all right? I hope so. Those falls. Another few seconds, we'd have gone over them. No, we didn't. All set, Roy. The rope is back to Trigger's saddle. All right, Pat. Give him the work. Trigger'll know what to do. I think Botfell went over the falls. If he had, we'd have found his body in one of these pools. And we've covered them pretty thoroughly. Hey, was Kaufman all right this morning, Roy? Yeah, but he's a little shaky. And I'm sure glad we didn't bring him along this time. Dale's much better help on a deal like this. Well, thank you, but it doesn't seem like we're getting anywhere. I told Kaufman to go in and give the sheriff the whole story. If we don't report some trace of Botfell by noon... He'll meet us with a posse. It's a funny thing, Roy. The sheriff was in the cafe about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and he said he'd been in his office all the time up to then. Oh, the sheriff considers one or nothing down the street anywhere in the block the same as being in his office. Kaufman could have missed him, and I guess he was too worried to wait. Well, I think we'd better backtrack and see if Bullock can pick up a trail closer to the dude ranch. He isn't finding anything here, so let's go. Come on, Trigger. Maybe when we get back to Kaufman's spread, we'll find that the millionaire showed up. Well, I don't know, Dale. He's been gone almost two days now. Of course, it could be a long walk back from where he was thrown, and a tenderfoot like that wouldn't know exactly where he was going, either. Here comes a rider. Say, he's in a hurry. Yeah, if you call him a rider, that's Kaufman. I see he's got a different horse. I guess he learned some sort of a lesson yesterday. Well, I lent him one. He promised he'd buy some decent stuff, but he hasn't had time yet. Oh, oh, there, boy. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, Roger, sir. I'm glad I found you. I figured maybe you'd be heading back about now. Well, any news? Did you go back and talk to the sheriff? I didn't talk to the sheriff, but there's news, and it's bad. Bad news? You mean Mr. Botfell's dead? No, no, but it's almost that bad. Well, tell us, Kaufman. Yeah, get hold of yourself and give us a story. Botfell's been captured. He's being held for ransom. What? Ransom? Well, how do you know? I had a phone call right after you left this morning. The voice said if I'd leave $50,000 at the base of Dorsey's Rocks, they wouldn't harm Botfeld. Otherwise, they said they'd kill him in two hours. Oh, who around here would do a thing like that? You mean to say you didn't let the sheriff know? Sheriff? This is a case for the FBI. No, they warned me about calling in the law. I... Oh, I hope I've done the right thing. Well, what did you do? I rode into town as fast as I could. I slapped a $50,000 mortgage on my spread at the bank and took the cash out to the rock. Well, we can't take the word of a desperate gang that they won't harm Botfell. We've got to find him. Did you see anything unusual at Dorsey's Rock when you left the money? Were there any clues at all? 
Well, just this, this scrap of paper. I don't know if it means anything or not. Well, let me see it. It's pretty badly printed. And it says the shack. It's an awful rumpled old scrap of paper. Mm. Probably doesn't mean a thing. The shack? Hey, wait a minute. There's an old abandoned shack in the gully about five miles north of your place, Mr. Kaufman. It'd be a perfect place to hold someone for ransom. Hey, we'd better ride in for the sheriff right now. Well, that would take two hours. And we can get to the gully in 15 minutes. In a case like this, every minute may count. Come on, let's go. Come on, get out. isn't there. They must have headed on down the gully. They couldn't have avoided us if they'd come this way. They'll be tough to trail in these rocks. At least they were in there now so we could get it over with. Well, let's creep up and see what we see. I'd better go alone first. The rocks will be good cover. Maybe I can see under the shack without being seen myself. Well, how can you see in? Don't seem to be any windows. Well, there's one window in the back, as I remember. You all stay here. I won't be long. I'll either come right back or call you if the coast is clear. Come along, Bullet. Roy's coming back. Sure didn't take him long. I guess he found out what he wanted to know. It was mighty smart of you to remember the shack, Miss Evans. I just hope the gang left that note to tell us where they left Botfeld. All right. We can go down there. The cabin isn't exactly empty, but I don't think we're in any danger. We'll lead the horses. Roy, what do you mean, the cabin isn't exactly empty? There's a man in there. He's bound and gagged and lying on the floor. A man? Is it Botfeld? I don't know. i never seen Botfeld. Well, how come you didn't go in? The door's locked, and I think we'll have to break it down. How about the window? It was open an inch or two, but I didn't want to slide it up any further. Might disturb some fingerprints and the dust on the sill. Well, did Bullet pick up any sort of a scent? He didn't seem to find anything at the rear of the shack. He was a little more interested in the front, but he didn't get very excited. Well, there are a few nicks in the rocks that could have been made by horseshoes. Yeah, there aren't many of them, though. If a kidnapping gang was operating out of here, it can't be a very big gang. Did the man inside see you? I don't think so. I didn't call to him because he couldn't have answered anyway. Now, let's see what we can do about the door. It's locked all right. Don't worry in there. We're going to break down the door. Let's go, Pat Kaufman. Get your shoulders against it. Till Roy returns, let's listen to his friends, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. How about it? Have you tried this marvelous new cereal? It's a special treat because Sugar Crisp is wholesome, nourishing puffed wheat, candy coated with pure honey and sugar. Sugar Crisp is grand for breakfast. With just milk or cream, no sugar needed. It's swell for between meal snacks. And you'll enjoy Sugar Crisp like candy right out of the box. Yes, it's the cereal treat that's fun to eat round the clock. So, Mother, this weekend, buy Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. A roughly scrawled clue on a piece of paper leads Roy, Dale, Pat, and Jeff Popman to a deserted shack in a remote gully. Roy sees a man bound and gagged inside the locked cabin, and they decide to enter forcibly. There we are. It's Mr. Botfeld. It's him. Mr. Botfeld, are you all right? I'll get the gag out of his mouth. Is this the fellow we're looking for? There you are. Are you all right? Uh, Thanks, miss. Oh, Kaufman, I've had a terrible experience. Hey, wait, who are these people? These are friends of mine from the valley. I'm so sorry this happened, Mr. Botfeld. I paid your ransom, and thank heaven the gang didn't harm you. Are you well enough to tell us just what happened, Mr. Botfeld? 
The important thing now is to get the men who are responsible for this. They roughed me up pretty badly, but I was conscious of everything they did. Well, here, let me get these ropes off while you're talking. Thank you. There were three men. They waylaid me evening before last and brought me here. Hey, haven't you anything to eat? I don't see no food around. The men went out one at a time occasionally and brought something back. They were very careful to keep things cleaned up. When they all left about an hour ago, it was the first time I'd been completely alone. We didn't pick up any trace of the gang coming down here. Do you have any idea which way they went? Uh, they locked the door from the inside and went through that back window. Take a look. Maybe they left some prints or something. There you are, Mr. Botfeld. Your arms aren't cut up from the ropes. <laughs> they really didn't do a very good job of tying you. Oh, they felt like steel bands to me. Oh, Kaufman, about that ransom money. How much was it and how did you get it? $50,000, Mr. Botfeld. I mortgaged my ranch to get the cash quickly. Well, I'll make arrangements to repay you. Although I ought to sue you for every penny but for subjecting me to a thing like this. I consider it gross negligence on your part. Oh, don't sue, Mr. Botfeld. The publicity would ruin me. Oh, and I've learned my lesson. From now on, I'm running a different kind of place. I hope so. And you don't have to repay me. I have an insurance policy which will cover it. I'll collect from the insurance company. I just hope we can keep the whole thing quiet. Mr. Botfeld, where have I seen you before? Huh? Your face looks so familiar. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Botfeld. You said the men who were holding you left through this window about an hour ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, no more than that, certainly. Well, that's strange. What's the matter, Roy? No fingerprints? No fingerprints, Pat, but there's a spider web here. Well, nothing unusual about a spider web in a deserted cabin? There is about this one. It takes a spider four or five hours to spin a web this big. The window was just like this when you and Botfeld came in here early this morning and faked this kidnapping. What, what are you talking about? Rogers, the very idea. Now I know where I saw you before, Mr. Botfeld. You were in the Eureka Cafe yesterday afternoon while Roy and Pat were out looking for you. He couldn't have been Miss Evans. Jeff, come on, make a break for it. Oh, no, you don't. Grab him, Pat. I got him. Roy, look out. Coffin's growing. He isn't going fast enough. Ow! Now, you swindler, do you still want to make a break for it? Look, Rogers, we're making plenty on this deal. Forget this whole thing. We'll, we'll cut you in for a couple of thousand. Still mighty generous, aren't you, Kaufman? Well, I hope you've got insurance to cover a broken jaw. No, no, don't, Rogers. I, I'll raise the price. Don't. Some people will never learn, and I don't suppose this will teach you anything. But it sure ought to quiet you down for a little while. You better let me go, Rogers. You'll never prosecute me successfully. I can spend millions on lawyers if necessary, and you'll never prove anything. <laughs> you can't bluff us. And I'm pretty sure we can prove that you were working for Kaufman. Yeah, and in that case, you ain't got a nickel because we know what kind of wages he pays. Let's get some ropes on him, Pat, and start him back to town. Yeah, and let's use our own ropes. Hey, when did you get wise to Kaufman, Roy? When I looked through the window, I saw that the ropes on Botfell were the same sort of junk that almost cost Kaufman his life yesterday. And from then on, every time either of them opened their mouths, they drew a tighter noose around themselves. Well, I know one dude ranch that isn't going to be operating anymore. And I guess a couple of insurance companies are going to be mighty happy with Kaufman and Botfeld out of the way. That's right. I've got a hunch they'll be able to pin enough swindles on them to ensure their privacy for a long, long time. <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellas and girls... Remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An art brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Come and get it! Come and get it! For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? 
they are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrapped post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Jack Moyles, and Will Wright. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.